Hello, my name is Eric Ryan and I'm a concept artist in the entertainment industry. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to design the Greek god Poseidon in a new way. Um, redesigning him in a way that uh, I think helps him fit his environment better and um, in a way that is different from what we've seen before uh, in his primarily more human representations. <clears throat> so. Um, Basically, I'll show you what I'm doing now, which is uh, I'm starting off with a base layer that is um, just a mid-tone color, trying to get just a, a little bit of interest with the um, gradient. Uh, nothing too fancy yet. I'll kind of spice up the background uh, towards the end, but just for the most part of this video, I'm going to primarily be focusing on um, nailing a good-looking creature with a lot of thought behind it. Um, I say creature because this Poseidon is going to be um, more of a mix of human and creature than he is in what we've seen uh, prior. Um, a lot of <clears throat> the prior designs I've seen in movies of Greek gods has been a, uh, a male or female goddess that looks very human, if not completely human, in a toga um, with slight modifications. Uh, usually to their attire, um, but here I'm going to be kind of merging Poseidon, who I think is really um, probably something different in my opinion, uh, since he lives in a completely different environment. He lives in the water. Um, most of the other gods seem to be dwelling in Olympus, <clears throat> so I want to merge him with uh, more of an amphibious uh, idea, possibly, or um, uh, maybe something that's a little bit more aquatic. Uh, so basically what I'm doing here is um, I'm drawing uh, just a, a rough sketch of what I think he could be. Um, I'll say this, I have a, uh, um, a love for the octopus and squid animals so I want to see if I can um, integrate that into uh, his design because I think that Poseidon um, in a lot of ways, uh, just his personality from what I read is very intelligent, but he's also very strong and cunning. Um, uh, he also can be very, uh, jealous and angry. Um, and I think a lot of those things are represented inside, uh, of an octopus because an octopus is very intelligent, um, or octopus or squid is very intelligent, but also it can be uh, extremely nasty. Um, <clears throat> so, so basically at this point, um, this is uh, sped up, obviously. Uh, what I'm doing is um, drawing uh, thumbnails, so to speak, um, onto a layer, and I'm doing a lot of uh, experimentation. Um, Sometimes I, I do my thumbnails in layers, um, meaning like I'll, I'll draw one layer, hide that layer, draw on another layer, um, hide that layer, draw on another layer, and just to, just to see what I can come up with. Um, most of the time, though, I separate my thumbnails out. I, 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 I'll make one thumbnail on the same page. Right next to it, I'll do another thumbnail. Right next to that, I'll do another thumbnail. Um, but for the sake of this video, I want to kind of speed things along and not have that whole process um, separated out. Um, so I'm kind of experimenting within the same thumbnail, more or less. Sometimes you'll see me um, show and reveal uh, another layer that has another drawing on it. <coughs> um, right now, what I'm doing is... Um, I, I, you see the fins on his back, the, on, on his neck. Um, that's kind of coming from a squid, because a squid, towards the top of his body, um, has uh, like these kind of flaps that help him swim. Um, and actually, they primarily, from what I've seen, primarily swim with those, and then the tentacles are more like a, uh, appendages that grab things with. They don't usually swim with their tentacles. Um, Another thing I'm doing right now is kind of adjusting the pose a lot. I'll grab 
a, a selection and of just a, a specific area of him and kind of move it around to see if that works better. Um, I'm trying to turn his head so that um, he, he kind of looks more at the viewer and also he's um, he's got a slight turn to him. Uh, one thing that I wanted to represent in Poseidon is his strength but also his kind of uh, his movement um, it, his, just the, the mere fact that he's uh, a squid slash octopus or whatever um, means he's gonna his body is gonna flow with movement or it should flow and so I want to represent that um, but also want to represent him in an interesting pose um, so that um, it's got a little bit of dynamism to it um, if I just had him in a very static pose which right now you can see his his torso is a, is a very up and down pose and his leg his tentacle legs kind of like uh, swirl out in an S shape I want to further um, bring that S shape up into his upper torso so that he feels very fluid right now his upper torso is too static so I'm gonna later on I'll adjust that so that it curves um, a big thing when you do uh, a character especially inside of an environment um, trying to get some kind of composition is rhythm um, this character since he he has already an interesting flow just by um, the fact that he's got those tentacle legs um, already introduces rhythm so I want to echo that rhythm as much as possible so um, you'll see that I, I force kind of this S shape across the, the whole character going from um, basically his trident all the way down to his legs is kind of this S shape uh, so it's a nice flow for the eye <clears throat> um, uh, some things I can talk about uh, on the side are um, inspirations I have um, some of my inspirations are uh, classical artists um, I really love Bernini he's a, a sculptor uh, post renaissance I think Baroque is the period or Rococo um, Michelangelo is another sculptor I love uh, I've seen both of their works it's it great um, and, and that's kind of what I'm trying to introduce here is to bring in some of the classical Greek uh, movement and, and anatomy into Poseidon um, to make him feel like he's he uh, represents that time um, more of my contemporary in, in inspirations would be people like Carlos Huante, uh, Ian McKaig um, great artists who also I believe uh, are inspired by those you know, past artists of long ago. Um, what I'm doing here is um, I'm messing around with the idea of um, Poseidon having forearms. I think that it kind of fits because Poseidon, obviously, I'm giving him a bunch of legs, and I think that that you know might just echo uh, his. Um, this is octopus or squidness. Uh, here I change his face. Um, uh, I wanted to give his face something that didn't feel so human. I want to kind of push his look into something that's not half human, half squid or octopus. I want to give him a more of a 70%, 30% mix. So in this case, he's going to be more creature than he is going to be human, um, which I think will be interesting and it'll lend towards the fact that he uh, lives in a water environment. Um, you can see there I, I threw on a shell, and I th think that I'm going to end up going with that. Um, the shell is put there because what I was really inspired by when I was gathering my reference, which is another thing I'll get into, is um, the Nautilus. The Nautilus is a really interesting creature. 
it's kind of squid and octopus, but it's got a shell, and it, the shell is really what gives it the most character. Um, and so I think what I'm going to do here with him is give him almost like this double shell. So it's kind of it kind of has a V shape if you were to look at it from the top. Um, and so it, I think what that does is gives him a lot more presence. Um, it, it makes him feel more royal, um, like other creatures wouldn't have that. Uh, for example, if he had guardsmen or henchmen of some kind, some type, they wouldn't have that uh, sh type of shell. Um, so these are a lot of the things I think about, just like complete story of who he is and who he surrounds himself with. Um, another thing you'll notice, um, not yet here, but uh, when you see the trident again, is that on the sides of the trident, the two outer prongs are kind of like seahorse shaped. Um, and I kind of wanted to subtly show that because um, I thought that they were the perfect creature or design to help uh, push that um, pitchfork or trident um, to a different level. I know it, it's not the most original trident, but um, part of the reason why I'm not going to mess around with the trident too much is because I think that um, uh, that's going to be what you recognize him the most with. Um, if you didn't have the trident, he might just look like a regular sea creature. Or, or not a regular sea creature, but um, uh, a sea creature. Um, but the trident, I think, is what makes him Poseidon. That's what is going to make the viewer know that that's Poseidon and, and nothing else. <clears throat> so, um, you'll notice I, I do this a lot. Um, I, um, you know, will make a selection, I'll move it around, see if it works, and um, adjust it. Um, and I, I kind of tinker around with that a lot. Uh, what I'm doing here, um, I, I know that I moved the arms around a lot and then erased them and drew them in, um, is basically I took photos of myself because I wanted to get a good pose and I wasn't feeling any of the poses that I had just done uh, off the top of my head. Um, and so I took a picture of myself uh, with the many arm poses. I um, photoshopped those arms together in a way where, like on myself, literally, so I had four arms. And now I'm drawing from that photo that I photoshopped together. Um, the, I have two screens. On the other screen, I'm um, looking at that photo. And I want the reason why is because I want this to be as precise as possible, as realistic and uh, plausible as possible. So I want to get that that detail. Um, and one thing I'll say about reference is I spent a good hour, hour and a half, just gathering reference. And I think that that's what really helps to sell your creature as something that could be real, could be plausible, um, is that you're always drawing from reality. Um, and that's that goes for poses, that goes for lighting, that goes for creature idea, uh, texture, anything. Um, and speaking of texture, one thing I didn't do in this video was overlay photo texture um, to get a that extra step of realism. Um, sometimes I'll do that, uh, sometimes I won't. For this particular creature, I didn't. Um, probably for copyright purposes, I don't know if that would go too well with a lot of people, but um, it that's something they do in movies a lot, is they'll um, overlay, you know, photo texture um, onto a, an existing drawing that they've already done, and just to push that realism even, even further. So like for the shell, I could have uh, found a shell texture, like the, the graininess of a shell and put, you know, overlaid that and, and warped that across the shell and made the shell look even more realistic. So here um, you can see I'm doing very basic shading, still cleaning it up. Um, spending a lot of time trying to nail the um, anatomy, uh, nail the kind of uh, level of detail I want, because um, I really want to sell this as a, a, a real 
possibility as far as creatures go, like uh, something that could possibly exist, or at least tricking the person into thinking that. Um, so I really try to spend a lot of time on the drawing. Um, if without a good drawing, um, you're not going to really have uh, a lot to go with. You can color it, you can do whatever you want to it, but if it's not a solid drawing, solid design, um, you're you might as well not even take it to color. <clears throat> um, at least that's my theory. Um, so, um, by the way, uh, just as a side note, um, uh, my website is uh, www.mellowsmooth.com. That's M-E-L-L-O-W-S-M-O-O-T-H-E dot com so you can check out some other stuff I've done um, a lot of stuff that I've done uh, I can't show so my website's kind of sparse um, but anyways that's all the marketing I'll do for today All right. <laughs> um, here um, I'm just messing with the head more. I'm not so satisfied with the head. And there's one thing I encourage is that if there's one thing on your design that you really are bothered by, don't let it go. Keep looking at it, walk away for a while, come back, whatever it is, don't let that go. Always try to get your drawing in all ways be um, something that you like and that you, you are happy with. Even when I walked away from this drawing after I was done with it, I there's things I wanted to change, but obviously, um, uh, you know, I needed to get this thing done at some point, and you got to kind of stop and just be happy with it or satisfied. Um, but there's always something I th think could be better, and you know, I'll save that for the next time I do a version of Poseidon if I do it again. Um, but uh, if you if there's something that you don't like, um, I would encourage you to stop, come back. And try to um, uh, erase it away and just draw it over see if there's anything else you can come up with maybe look at reference for a while come back to it and say hey maybe you know I found some interesting ideas from these photos I got from the internet whatever so don't you know cut yourself short try to use reference or use clearing your mind as a way to come up with new ideas um, a lot of times under pressure, you know, I'll be at work and um, uh, I'll have to think of something cool for a particular creature or, or just on the spot and, and you don't have a lot of time usually to um, get these uh, ideas out there. So uh, spend some time looking at reference, um, kind of forcing yourself to be imaginative. Look at things, go through books. Uh, maybe look at your, some of your favorite artists, maybe look at reference that has nothing to do with your character or creature, um, just interesting photos, and maybe that'll spark some imagination in one way, shape, or form. So. Here it looks like I'm just, um, you know, putting some highlights and just on the face and, and trying to build out the face a little bit, see if I like it, see if I don't. Um, I do end up going with something similar to this. Um, the, the reason why I changed this head from the head that had the kind of tentacles was that I needed to get that. Davy Jones uh, idea out of my head and I needed to draw it and I needed to erase it. Um, uh, I know Davy Jones from the movie Pirates of the Caribbean had tentacles and I really needed, that's the only thing I could think of and I needed to get that out of my head. 
Um, there's aspects I liked about that design in the face um, that I think could help my character uh, in that he's got a beard which kind of points to wisdom and, and age um, and I wanted that to be in Poseidon but I didn't want to have the tentacles I didn't want to outwardly just you know take from another design or um, add more tentacles to the face where there are already tentacles to the legs it just didn't seem functional um, or as interesting as it could be so um, I wanted to play around with the face more and, and do something that it wasn't as expected. Um, you don't want to, you know, for example, put tentacles everywhere. I mean, just not gonna like, you know, have his arms that are holding a trident be tentacles too. It's just, I think it's a little overkill. Um, and and I don't. Th it it would just make him too much of a creature and not enough. Um, of a humanoid type of creature that you could possibly relate to more. Um, there's interesting things that I wanted to do. Um, I was thinking of doing with his arms, like making him skinnier and lankier and, and kind of longer, almost alienish. I um, moved away from that because I felt that um, it would just make him just that, too alien, too um, unrecognizable as a um, Greek god um, or unrelatable. Um, so I wanted to kind of still keep the viewer um, somewhat, you know, um, keep, keep it the character somewhat relatable to the viewer so that, you know, they feel that they're not just looking at a alien creature in the water. <clears throat> so. Uh, basically what I'm doing here is with an overlay layer I'm just dropping in quick uh, lighting from the front. I did a little bit of the back shadows um, the shadows on the back side I should say um, and I'm using an overlay layer to do a little bounce light on the back uh, and mostly um, drop in quick lighting on the front side um, this lighting um, is all kind of referencing the photo that I took of myself. Um, um, and so I'm not, I took out a lot of guesswork um, and that's for the sake of speed and accuracy. Um, I made it another layer, an overlay layer just for the highlights. Um, one thing I can't stress enough is uh, good anatomy um, because not only is it important obviously to be good at drawing anatomy just for realism's sake but it's also good to know where to go from that know where to go from reality if you don't have a good basis in reality um, not just anatomy with other things like skin texture or um, uh, you know shapes that we can relate to um, and that are familiar to us um, then you're not going to know how to push that in, in other ways like for example if I don't know how to draw a good looking arm um, then I'm not going to know how to good, draw a good looking alien arm or a cartoon arm um, uh, so I think that always drawing from reality gives you a great uh, bouncing point, jumping off point to other styles and other um, um, ideas. So here I'm kind of modifying his head because I'm still not happy with this weird stringy hair thing. I don't want his head to look like it has hair because it's already I'm already giving him something that kind of is mustache beard like. So trying to figure out something that that kind of diamond shape is basically referencing, you know, the diamond shape of a squid. 
and those kind of shoulder patty things are kind of referencing the um, soft skin uh, of the nautilus that kind of protrudes out of um, the shell. The head I'll be messing around more with. Right now what I'm doing is I started obviously doing some of the tentacles, uh, the suction cups on the tentacles, and I got to a point where they're looking really, you know, goofy and unclean, and I kind of want to make them all clean looking and um, do this in a way that is clean and quick. So I'm making a brush just for the suction cup. Um, um, so you'll see how I do that. It's really, you know, from far away, this looks like a terrible drawing. Um, but I'm sorry, from close up, this looks like a terrible suction cup. Um, but I'm not trying to spend, spend too much time on it. I just need it to look good from far away. Um, so I was looking at what a suction cup looks like and drew it. And now I'm going to slap it on there with a, the brush tool after I make a brush out of it. Um, brush tool is uh, a lot of times an interesting and quick way to get, you know, not only details, repetitive details like this, but also texture and um, things that, you know, might help your painting, you know, be more painterly or just give it a little bit more character in general. Um, suction cup brush is one brush. It's kind of a brush that you're probably won't ever use again but there's a lot of brushes that I do use a lot um, which the one that you're seeing that I have used the most is um, it's kind of like a round brush but it's flattened to like a very sharp kind of ellipse and then it's angled to the side so it has a nice cut to it um, which I'll, I'll try to include that in <clears throat> this design I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to make him more interesting. He just seems kind of boring. And I even go so far as to add jellyfish tentacles to him. See if that works. And the more I draw him, the less I like him. So I'll be getting rid of those. <clears throat> um, at this point, I can be honest. I'm very frustrated with his head and um, trying to figure out what I can do. So that's why he has, his head design just changed. Um, what I'm trying to do here is I've thought, um, I've looked at more aquatic reference and I completely um, want to redesign the head. Um, this I'm starting to like more um, because it's uh, aquatic but it's not something that I've seen uh, especially on a Poseidon character before so I think that this general idea is going to be um, seen in the final. Um, these bumpy little fin pieces on the tentacle legs are um, interesting and I'll, there's something there that I like but I also um, think they're too much. Um, one of the reasons why I step away from this is because I think it's a little too flamboyant and feminine and I want him to feel masculine, powerful, um, you know I want those ideas to be um, resonated throughout the drawing. So just working his face. You can see I've done a detailed the face out a little bit more. Um, 
you know, I apologize for not showing the um, entire process of making the face or the entire process of making the body. It's just too much video and uh, I kind of want to say a lot and show you a lot in a, a short amount of time because uh, these um, demo tapes are kind of boring. So I want to cover a lot and not have people fall asleep. Um, another thing too is you, I can demo this for uh, as long as I want to, but you really need to, um, you know, be drawing on your own, be uh, practicing on your own to um, get good looking um, uh, faces and, and, and good looking anatomy. Um, my one demo wouldn't do that for you. You need to do a lot of, uh, look at a lot of people, a lot of techniques, um, see what works for you, <clears throat> what kind of um, helps to turn that light on your head that, oh, this is how you do it. Um, and I've done a lot of uh, research in that department. Um, uh, another thing I want to say too is uh, another reason why I'll use, why I will use a reference um, and look at other artists and, and um, movies and things of that nature is that I want to um, see what's already been done. I don't want to do what's already been done. I want to be original. I want to um, come, uh, you know, bring to the table a new design, a new look on something that is maybe old or maybe it is a, a completely new character. Um, um, but I want it to be provocative so um, you can't really do that when you just uh, outwardly take from other people's designs and just add a couple things so hopefully this design of Poseidon is um, original um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this um, some of the creatures that I did look at that were um, kind of going through my head as I was making this cre this Poseidon character creature um, were the Kraken from the Clash of the Titans movie. Uh, I forgot when that was done, the 70s maybe. Um, I was looking at, uh, obviously looked at, you know, Davy Jones as I was talking about earlier. Um, I was looking at, um, uh, obviously, you know, oh, I was looking at, um, Abe from Hellboy, um, seeing what he had that I liked and didn't like, and, and, you know, I want to say what I liked and didn't like, I don't ever want to take from a design, but I want to use that design to inspire me to do something different or use it to inspire me um, to um, see if I can use what has been done in my own way. Um, so, um, so it comes out feeling very new and fresh. Um, um, and I'll say this, being new and fresh is not easy, uh, especially these days when you have, a, you know, a lot of character and creature designers out there, um, lots of designs being done. Um, so um, you may think you're being original one day, but then you see, you know, somebody else has done it uh, yesterday. So it's, it's kind of difficult. Especially when um, you're being asked to 
design a character that's been redesigned about, you know, five times. Uh, this head and this kind of um, design of like these kind of um, more rigid fin shapes um, is something that I bring into the final. I keep these. I just kind of um, refine them. Um, I like them for a few reasons. Uh, one is that you can see how his head kind of mimics his um, pit, his pitchfork or his trident um, and I, th I think that's good. Um, you want to mimic shapes, or no, you don't want to, you want to repeat shapes throughout your design. Just as I've repeated those bumpy patterns on the fins throughout, you know, his arms and his uh, tentacle legs. So it feels integrated. Um, a lot of times I'll see in movies uh, char characters and creatures that are not well integrated. They don't, they feel like if you cut off an arm or if you cut off a head, you wouldn't know um, that that arm or head belongs to that creature because that arm or head doesn't mimic or doesn't, um, I'm sorry, doesn't um, uh, repeat patterns in it that are that echo throughout the rest of the design of the character. So you want to um, echo some patterns and shapes um, throughout the character. So for example, um, I, I mentioned the bumps um, on his kind of rigid part, parts of his body, but um, you know, if his, for example, his uh, trident, you were to find it, say you're playing a video game, you were to find Poseidon's trident, um, this trident, repli uh, this, this trident shows his, the shape of his crest on his head. Um, so you can kind of see that this is Poseidon's trident and not anybody else's trident. Um, so I, that's part of the reason why you want to um, show uh, forms that repeat. What I'm doing here is um, adding a skin texture to kind of show the translucency and, and veininess of his skin, but in a very subtle way. Um, you wouldn't see unless you were you know, a little closer in on him. But it, it adds um, a fair amount of realism. Um, and then really trying to get the skin to feel very translucent um, and squid-like. One thing um, I really thought was cool in some of the uh, squid reference I was looking at was um, giant squids. There's, um, you know, obviously real giant squids out there. And what's strange about them is that um, they've got suction cups that have barbs on them, like literal, like, bony kind of barbs on the suction cup and I thought that was really vicious and, and cool looking. I didn't in integrate it um, into this design because I, I thought you wouldn't really see it um, although I could have made it more visible. Uh, I didn't think it necessary for um, this creature to be that vicious and kind of savage looking but I did think it was it was cool that in reality there are pretty um, vicious and crazy creatures out there like that um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm um, adding kind of a bumpy crest thing to his chest just to you know 
move his very human looking chest into something a little bit more aquatic or less human um, really trying to get his very human proportioned and shaped arms and torso area to feel more um, aquatic trying to kind of push that 50 50 um, half human half um, squid to more of a 70% squid, you know, 30% human. There's other ways to do that, but, you know, I'm gonna take this route. I think if I were to be objective about my own work, which I encourage everybody to do, um, is I'd like to, if I were to redesign him, I'd like to push his um, anatomy a bit more. I'd like to push his arms to maybe a longer creepiness. Um, seeing what a, a maybe a meaner looking Poseidon would look like. Um, some Somebody that is very angry and very vengeful. Um, this one's a little more toned down, I think. I think it's he's almost a Poseidon you can walk up to and have a conversation with. Um, almost. Or swim up to. I know what I'm doing is coloring the background um, using colors that I was uh, looking at in a reference photo uh, of an underwater area. Um, I think that's doing something, drawing an environment that's underwater is not easy to do. There's a few things that are different about underwater. Um, not only is it the color, uh, the colors that are bouncing around, but it's the fogginess of things that are underwater. Um, things are a bit more blurred, um, and they drop off in kind of like a, a depth fog, if you will, um, very quickly. Um, so you can't really see farther than, you know, 25, 35 feet. <coughs> um, Getting a little shininess. One thing I noticed too is I'm not, and, and I hesitate to say this because the, the trident is kind of shiny. Um, I'm not trying to make something super shiny, um, super wet looking because when things are underwater, you really don't get that. You really don't get that uh, level of shininess, hard shines. You uh, like a, when you look at a squid out of water that's wet. It's very shiny, very reflective. But it, when it's in water, it's not as reflective. <clears throat> um, so I'm trying to um, show that you know, not bringing too many hard shines onto him. Um, you can be the judge of how successful I am with that. Just coloring them. I drop down a color very quickly, and then I'll just move it, move it around on the hue saturation to um, see if there's another color that I'm not putting down that could be better fit for him. Usually, I'll find a color that is, if nothing else, matches him better. The reason why I'm warming him up too is that <clears throat> I want him to pop off of the background a bit more. I want him to usually warm colors, bring things forward, cool colors, um, push things back. But also, um, even if he was a cool color and the background was a warm color, do you want to have colors that set him off from the background so that he doesn't merge too much with the background? 
Um, not so much though that he, um, you know, stands out, um, stands out and ridiculously. So you kind of want it's a balance. You kind of want him to merge a little bit with the, the atmosphere so that it feels like he's in the atmosphere, but then you, then again, you don't want him to get lost. Um, and you know, some some of that comes into lighting. Um, you know, using the lighting to pop him uh, him off. Um, I just noticed something. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm um, giving him some um, jewelry accoutrements um, just to make him feel a little bit more civilized, a little bit more cultured. If he didn't have that, um, he, he wouldn't feel as godlike or as relatable so I want to kind of give him a culture um, and I think that's um, sometimes when people design characters um, they don't characters or creatures they don't bring the character into um, uh, its culture enough we don't it doesn't like for example I feel like there's a little bit more backstory with him when he's got these um, pieces on him. It feels like um, I could say, well, he's, you know, somebody crafted this belt for him, or um, he got this um, tiara um, from, you know, Zeus or something like that. Uh, you just feel like there's a little bit more to him, to him and his story when uh, they've got some culture to him. Um, if he was just, uh, you know, a creature that was running around who wasn't intelligent, um, then you wouldn't need to do something like that. Um, but for, uh, you know, Poseidon, who's very intelligent, has his own range of emotions, um, you probably want to give him something that f makes him feel cultured. Just using an overlay layer to, uh, drop in some highlights. Trying to get that trident to look as um, shiny. Oh, no, I hesitate to say shiny, but as metallic as possible because I don't want it to feel like it's the same material as his skin. Um, that leads me into another um, thing I want to talk about, which is material indication. You want to. Um, in your design, you want to do things to break up spaces. Um, you want to use different material specularities to break up uh, spaces. You want to use um, different tones to break up uh, spaces because you don't, if you notice Poseidon before I put his jewelry on, um, he, he was very much one color throughout his entire body. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm putting these stripes on him is to kind of give him more breakup. Um, um, I could probably use some more breaking up on his trident as well. Um, so, yeah, use, uh, I encourage using um, a few different ways to break up the uh, character. Um, now that being said, if you break up the character too much um, and you don't give, you put too much detail and you don't give the, the eye a chance to rest in certain areas, meaning there's detail everywhere, um, then the eye is not going to know where to focus. You want to um, have the eye have a place to rest in an area of low detail, low tonal change, low um, material change. So in this case, um, uh, there's going to be some of that on the lower part of 
is um, tentacle legs. Um, not putting a lot of detail into um, the lower arms. Um, there's a little bit of a, an area for the eye to rest on the stomach. Um, then it gets a little, you know, gradually starts to get more detailed and broken up as you go up. And that's kind of to, the reason why is that's kind of to um, bring the fun and the interest up towards his face. Um, where you'll be looking at the most. Um, you notice too the stripes, a lot of the shapes that I'm putting on him, um, draw your eye upwards. Um, they allow you, your eye to flow upwards. Um, and that's kind of the rhythm I'm trying to create um, and, and to help promote also this S, S shape that I have. It's kind of like a backwards S if you can see it, um, going all the way from the base of his tentacles all the way up and through his body up into his head and then, you know, going towards his trident. Um, one thing about rhythm is that you, um, you don't want to have too much flow when you have rhythm. Um, meaning you don't want to have a pose or um, or a rhythm that has too much uh, kind of like back and forth like I don't want to make a, I don't know how to describe it other than like a triple S shape where it's like um, curve 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 um, in your um, pose or the flow of things because it, it it's too complex. You either want a C like a C shape or an S shape. Um, something that's not that complex um, that um, allows the eye to kind of flow around uh, in a interesting way. Um, I think part of that is that you don't want people getting caught up so much in the rhythm of things. You want that to be more of a subtle um, a subtle aspect of your, your drawing or your composition. And you want it to flow smoothly um, because there's more interesting things that you're trying to accomplish with your drawing. So there you can see I put uh, rim light. Um, Rim light. I think I, I think I did that with a uh, color dodge layer. Just you know, I'm, I'm, what I try to do, and I do this a lot, is that I'll throw down a, a mark, and it's very heavy-handed. I just want to throw it down there and see how it is, um, um, and then I'll go back and knock it back with an eraser. Um, I do that because it, it helps me to set it in the world better in a gradual way. If I try to do it, you know, the first on the first stroke, it, it usually doesn't come out um, with the right amount of opacity. So um, I'm a little heavy-handed with some of those things, so I try to uh, knock it back afterwards, and it usually works pretty well. Here I'm just kind of scribbling, scribbling in school of fish that kind of, if you'll notice, they help promote further that S shape. Um, so anything you can do in your design, your composition, your posing to promote um, and to kind of uh, help the rhythms and the composition you've created um, are helpful, obviously. Um, that can be you know, edge using edges, the soft and hard edges. That can be um, flow. You can kind of see, uh, for example, the eye. Once it gets to around his head area, your eye can kind of flow with his mustache piece um, up to the trident. So you have the, the mustache piece kind of uh, curls up towards the trident. Um, one thing I could say if I was going to be objective about this is that it would be 
helpful if I did something to bring your eye from the trident back down to his body so that you get like a kind of a circulating pattern that doesn't force your eye off the page. Um, and I don't think I resolved that in the final piece. So I'll, maybe I'll fix it just for my website or something. So here, what's happening is the um, smudge tool is taking way too long. So I just make a selection and um, I want these fish to look blurry like they're moving and I'll just do a motion blur on them in the direction that they're moving. And it works pretty well. It's a lot faster. Lots lot faster. Part of the issue I had with creating this video was that um, uh, the software, the capturing software I was using um, would slow down my computer significantly. So that's part of the reason why I need to speed it up and um, uh, kind of get things going. Um, my computer is a lot slower than it should be. Here what I'm doing is I'm pumping up the contrast because I find a lot of times I'm not using a full range of uh, value that I should be and um, when I when I you know push my drawing into using that full range of value, I'll um, make the des design and the drawing more interesting. So now that's what I've done. Here, what I'm doing is I'm kind of scribbling in some seaweed. Um, I've been ridiculed before <laughs> by people on the internet for not making environments for my characters. So I'm kind of reluctantly making an environment for them. Um, what I'm going to do here too is um, um, warp these pieces of seaweed um, so that they flow in that kind of S pattern, backwards S pattern, um, to kind of help, you know, again, promote his rhythm. What I'm doing here is I'm flattening the image, duplicating it, then I'm turning, I'm taking that duplicated image on top, um, blurring it with a Gaussian blur, and then I'm turning that using blending layers uh, into a lighten layer, um, which kind of gives you this, um, uh, if you do that together, if you blur it and you turn it into a light and layer, it gives this kind of glow, this kind of like bl bl blurry kind of glow. Um, part of the reason why I'm doing that is it's blurry underwater, uh, more blurry than it is out of water. Um, so I'm trying to push that. Um, and I'm also trying to um, give him just a, an, an effect, interest, kind of like this bloom kind of fuzziness, the lights hitting him, it, um, some of the edges are lost. Um, and I'm, what I'm doing in addition to that is I've applied a layer mask and I'm erasing away some of that fuzziness so that I can have detail in areas that are more important, um, which are basically the chest, trident, face, um, upper parts of the body. And I even do that with some of the fish. I erase away some of the uh, blurriness. 
um, what I'm doing here is I'm um, adding kind of a, a illuminated look from the light um, onto the seaweed leaves so that they feel like they're being lit from one side. Um, and and I, if you notice in the close-up, I added little speckles of like dirt and debris in the water just to push it into that, you know, underwater realism. Um, I also want to say, since we're coming to the end of the video, um, thank you for watching. I hope it's been informative. Um, and, uh, you know, please visit my website. Um, again, it's www.mellowsmooth.com. M E L L O W S M O O T H E. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, there's some new stuff in here that you haven't seen before. Um, so thank you for watching. I'll just let the rest of the video play out.